Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the main story in today's Independent as it accuses the Tories of cooking the books in order to make it look like the asylum backlog is going down artificially. This is not the first time that Sunak has tried to lie about asylum figures rather than actually doing something about them. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So each morning, I tend to browse newspaper front pages on the BBC website. It's a good place to get all of them together or most of them together. And you do sometimes notice that the headlines that are especially embarrassing to the government, particularly if they're not widely being reported, tend to be conspicuous by their absence. Now, last night, I saw what would be a very embarrassing headline for the government in The Independent. You, you see what the front page is going to look like last night. So I had a little look through the BBC going, I wonder if they'll show this. And no, this morning was no different. The front page of The Independent did not feature on today's BBC page highlighting Sunday front pages. Um, but as I say, I'd seen it browsing last night, so I knew to find it. How Tories cook the books to cook asylum seekers. Now, why would the BBC not show that when they do usually publish the front page of The Independent? In point of fact, The Independent seems to be investing a little bit of time in, into asylum because yesterday's front page was about ministers evicting Afghan refugees, something which uh, will not play well to their pro-veteran voters. Funnily enough, the BBC didn't draw attention to that one yesterday either. But anyway, cooking the books, as The Independent reports the Labour Party put in it. The general accusation is rather than actually deal with the asylum backlog, the Tories are just working out ways to fiddle the figures. And I have to say, this is always their plan A, isn't it? Dealing with things requires a plan and funding. And specifically funding that invariably doesn't end up in the offshore bank accounts of their mates. So before we get into the details, what would reducing the asylum backlog actually involve if it was done honestly? Well, someone claims asylum in the UK, so they need help completing an application, then the application needs assessing. If it's unsuccessful, they are deported. No fuss from courts, no lefty lawyers, as long as it's all done lawfully, they're deported, we no longer need to worry about them. And those claimants whose application is successful are then allowed to work. We could do with that because we've got a hell of a labour shortage these days. Either way, we no longer need to shell out a load of money on expensive accommodation or, in many cases, even benefits. They will either no longer be in the country or they will be working and paying their own way, including paying taxes. Beyond me, how those who support the Conservatives over this think that the alternative of just letting the backlog climb higher and higher meaning more expensive provisions are needed, is preferable. How does that make sense? In fact, we don't even need to process claims in the UK. France were happy for us to set up a processing centre in the north of France. That way, no asylum claimants need have come here before being approved. But anyway, the Conservatives have made it clear they're not interested in dealing with the issue. It would be cheaper, humane and legal, yes, but it wouldn't help them shovel vast sums of money into the hands of Tory donors. And whenever you see a report following the money, a lot of it ends up in the hands of those with links to the Tories, whether it be hotel owners, barge owners, or even pals of the Home Secretary in Rwanda. I could also say that they think they get a side benefit in stoking culture wars by blaming asylum seekers for all our ills. However, as recent polling showed, that is failing. The public overwhelmingly think the government are messing it up. And overwhelmingly, by the way, is an understatement there. In fact, this headline about fiddling the figures comes as no surprise to me. Sunak has said he will clear the backlog. I can see that he's not actually doing anything to accelerate the process and the claims. Like, he's not investing in more staff to do that, for example. So it's obvious that the only way to reduce the figures is just to remove a load of claimants from the official figures without processing them. Simple logic. Sunak had also tried to downplay the size of the backlog as if it weren't a recent thing since the Tories came to office. He said in Parliament, no less, that the current backlog was half that under Labour, as if actually, oh, you think it's bad. It was way worse then, but we've actually made it better. No, in actual fact, the backlog at the time he said that was 14 times greater than when Labour were in office. It was such a ridiculous lie that it was immediately seized upon. No one believed it. And yet, Rishi Sunak, despite having said this in Parliament, has still not corrected the record. So he has 
knowingly misled the House. So he's broken the ministerial code. Oh, but don't worry. There won't be a Privileges Committee investigation into his lies because he hasn't outraged the public. That's my worry about Sunak. He's learned. He's a bit cleverer than Boris Johnson. Sunak knows he can tell the most outrageous lies. There is no lie that, that is too much. He can tell the most outrageous lies in the House of Commons where everyone there knows he's lying and nothing will happen to him as long as he doesn't upset the public to the point where they demand an investigation. Johnson fell foul of this by spitting on the memories of the dead and the grieving loved ones left behind. But it's clear now that Rishi Sunak is wanted to operate a campaign of mass deception ahead of the election. He's not actually doing anything. You look at all the policies he says he has, he's not actually doing anything. He's just fiddling figures. He's not going to do anything. He's just going to work out how to reclassify things so that you're comparing apples with oranges to fool the voters into thinking the figures look better than they are. With asylum, his moves so far seem to have included simply removing, according to the report, 6,000 claimants from the list for things like, you know, missing an appointment or not responding to a letter. The article seems to suggest, for example, some of these letters are sent knowing that they're not going to reach the intended recipient. The phrase used was served to file only. In other words, they're sending off a letter so they can tick the box saying, well, we sent a letter without any confidence it's going to the right address. So they sort of know it's probably not actually going to get there. But they've sent a letter. That way, when they don't get a response, they say, well, they're not responded to us, so we'll just cross them off the list. Now, this is a terrible policy for three main reasons. First of all, you're not reducing the backlog. If someone claims asylum, process their claim. If you haven't processed their claim, they are still an asylum seeker. Removing them from an official list doesn't stop that. It's just a deception to the public. Second, let's say they're not a genuine asylum seeker. Some aren't. A small number are not. So let's say they are actually an illegal immigrant in the very real sense. Well, you're giving them the green light to simply disappear. After all, um, someone who's not a genuine asylum seeker, someone who's doing it fraudulently, they don't want their claim processed, do they? Because their claim will fail. So shouldn't the anti-immigration crowd be appalled that Sunak and Bravman are adopting a system that basically tells actual illegal immigrants that all they have to do is claim asylum, then just disappear and they'll be crossed off the list and nobody will process their claim. Nobody will find it fraudulent. No one will deport them. Third, some may be vulnerable. This policy abandons traffic to people, maybe even children. It feeds slavery in Britain. It is an appallingly inhumane policy, as well as damaging our economy. I mean, imagine what the reaction would be if the bulk of the public knew about this. Is it any wonder the Tory client media, including their shills at the BBC, don't want this report what, this reported widely? Like, but there's also the hypocrisy, isn't there? So then you imagine, you always imagine with something like this, if you're not happy about the way the media reports on it, how would they report on if it was a different government, you know, a Labour government, realistically? There's no way the media wouldn't be reporting on it every day and make all the same points I've just made about the drawbacks of the system. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.